Louis Ginter is really one of the most beautiful gardens in the country. I think uh, Condé Nast would agree with me. Um, the diversity of locations, uh, interior and exterior, wetlands, uh, woodlands and different uh, settings really are what bring the sculpture to life. So here we have uh, a piece called Emerging Peace, a collaboration with uh, the great origami master Michael G. LaFosse uh, telling the story of the life cycle of a butterfly and right behind it is the actual butterfly, living butterfly exhibit that Louis Ginter has here in the conservatory. So I think that's a great example of the artwork uh, magnifying and being magnified by the different uh, uh, exhibits and displays that are already here. It is a very simple 35-step, 12-week process. Um, it takes a year to make almost any one of these pieces really from start to finish and uh, for somebody that wants to have uh, satisfaction you know quickly it's definitely a, a pleasure to layer and something that has honed my patience. But the idea of taking paper and transforming it into an archival context or material that can penetrate time and that can endure for not just years, but decades and generations and even thousands of years is really um, one of the motivators that made me uh, decide to, to take on this challenge of transforming paper into museum quality metals. Bronze is a 6,000 year old technique uh, on the planet that people have been uh, experimenting with. And art history goes back 33,000 years, give or take. And so to be a part of that conversation, uh, for me is worth the extra expense and time it takes to do it in metals like cast stainless steel, aluminum and bronze. I'm sure I could do a lot of this work uh, cheaper and easier and certainly lighter out of fiberglass and have a similar effect today. But my concern is that the work have an effect on people tomorrow and the next day and the next generation. I have a Muse's paper and the blank page. So like many artists, uh, whether you, and many people that are dealing with creativity in general, and I don't just limit that to arts, uh, if you're a mathematician or a writer or a composer or a painter, uh, we all begin with a blank page to a, to a certain degree as a metaphor of creativity. We are making something out of nothing all the time. You know, first our mind is blank, and then thoughts appear and words appear, and words become our mouths and our sentences transform the world around us. So as an artist, that, that's very inspiring to me, um, but I think it's something that many people can relate to. So the themes of tabula rasa, uh, a Greek philosophy, the idea of making something out of nothing and beginning with a a single blank square is what I think why I resonate so much with origami. Because every origami design and every piece in the exhibit began as one blank page. And so they all began in a similar origin, you know, as something very humble and simple as we all do. And it is really through the process of choices, decision making, the actions that are taking each fold transforms the blank page into something different. And each one of us is going to make our lives into something different through a combination of choices and determination. So for me, that's really what Origami in the Garden is about. It's what the story that it tells. And hopefully people will find that enchantment in uh, different examples. You know, there's uh, difficulties along the way, and that's sort of what hones us all. Uh, so it's hard to say that I don't appreciate the, the struggle because of the results. Um, some days I'm a a logistics manager, some days I'm a, a, a designer, some days I'm in marketing and telling stories, and other days I get to actually be what I consider an artist. I probably spend maybe 20% of my time as an artist, so to speak, or as what people would think of an artist, actually in the studio creating something new. <clears throat> but I really firmly believe that the great artists of history all were the quote-unquote Renaissance men and women uh, in the sense that it takes all of these elements. It takes a, a complete awareness and dedication to being uh, good and achieving at things that you don't like as much as things that you do like. So being able to spend the time and the, the want and the will power to excel in areas that might not be your favorite part of the process are just as important at 
having success or, or finishing or completing the process as the things that you do enjoy. Every exhibition, the pieces change depending on the surroundings. So I think today, uh, emerging piece in this beautiful conservatory with the butterfly exhibit behind the content connection and the experience of the space rising up. I, this is a beautiful installation. And so this is one of my favorites. And then the uh, paper navigator in the Japanese pond, I think is just an exquisite and simple and subtly beautiful piece. Um, <clears throat> one of the, the stories that I tell in a lot of the work, especially when we unfold the origami, is about the star and uh, revealing the invisible and showing what's seen and what's not seen. And one of the highlights of Paper Navigator in the Pond is looking for the star in that sculpture because the paper boat forms a shape on the surface of the water, but in the reflection, there's a, a duplication of that surface in a little bit of a you know, wavy pattern, but in total, the boat becomes a star in itself. And I think that's a really magical uh, thing for people to discover, and I hope they see that. It acts just like a boat on anchor. So I'm a third generation sailor, and I grew up sailing boats, small boats and large, and still today. So it's a passion of mine. And I've grown up working with boats and dealing with the ways that they work in the wind and how sailboats act in different situations. And that piece is designed with actually has a keel, uh, much like a sailboat that, that weights the bottom of the boat, but it also guides the boat and it's on an anchor line similar to a boat out on, out on anchor. And so in a, in a nice breeze, the boat will actually tack back and forth against the wind. And it's a really, a really beautiful and subtle thing to watch. One of my favorite quotes is by Michelangelo and he says, even the greatest work of art is but a shadow of divine perfection. And the sense that many artists, myself included, are inspired by nature and what we see in the world, we're we're talking about what we see or what we experience, we're copying it, we're inspired by it, but, but, but it isn't the thing itself. So a uh, nesting pair is a story of two birds building a nest. And in a way that is a self-portrait of my wife and I, when we built our first home together, we had the uh, opportunity to create a, a home and studio in Santa Fe, New Mexico from scratch. And we built it and we designed it with architectural drawings and sticks and twigs of of construction materials, but in nature, obviously, animals are doing the same thing, and it inspired the series. Uh, when we were installing nesting pear in the pond the other day, uh, Kristen walked by and said, "Look, there's a nest, a real nesting pear," and I, you know, we're kind of like, "What do you? Yeah, that's the name of the piece." But there were two ducks, a male and a female mallard, right nearby, sort of fishing around, doing their thing, and it became a question of. I, are they nesting and where? And sort of people started looking for where the nest was. Um, another example was the squirrel. You know, there's we're we're putting seed sower in. There's a squirrel and a and an acorn nearby, and there's an oak tree in the distance in the background. Uh, and we we try to locate that piece near oak trees for that obvious conversation and to talk about it doesn't need to be under the oak tree necessarily because that's what squirrels do. They take the 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 acorns and they go dig a hole away from the tree and that's how forests uh, propagate but there are squirrels you know crawling all around because there's an oak tree nearby and, and so it was, it's pretty fun. It's an honor and a pleasure as an artist to get to create art and share it with the public. Um, my passion when I left school uh, at the School of Visual Arts in Manhattan was to do public art and I had achieved over 20 pieces in public art uh, installations around the country, but still was finding some uh, dissatisfaction with the process, with was I really reaching the audience that I wanted? And I, I never thought that I would be in this place as an artist uh, taking these exhibits around to botanical gardens, but I think I've found the perfect fit for my desire to reach a, a large audience, to be able to tell a story and then really interact. I think botanical gardens have some of the most beautiful outdoor obviously the most beautiful outdoor spaces, but they're really, uh, for me as a sculptor, they become outdoor museums or outdoor exhibition spaces. And because my work has a relationship with the outdoors and with plants and with animals, there's a real synergy that happens there. But the programming that botanical gardens have today and the roles that they play 
uh, in education and busing school children out and engaging them in content and connection and uh, the different aspects that are really important. Um, for me, that's really an opportunity that I'm fulfilled by. My wife has a master's in education from NYU and her goal and her, her passion to connect and change the lives of children through education is, is also fulfilled in this because together we've created stories and artworks and programming in collaboration with the educational programming that the gardens already have to really engage an audience of all ages. So it's not just children, but you know, adults and elderly alike. I mean, everybody has uh, something to experience at a botanical garden. And our exhibit being here is temporary. So it's a, an exciting opportunity for people to come. Maybe they have been, but it's been a while and this is a great excuse. Uh, maybe they come regularly, but this uh, brings them something more to talk about. And I think right now, uh, we need a little zen in the garden and we need a little peace and a little time of self-reflection, uh, who we are, where are we going and why are we here? And there's no better place than in nature to have that experience. And I hope that the work has titles and subject matter and content that help people maybe inspire them to be a little bit more in touch with that.